Hello everyone and welcome to the Innovation Showcase Theater. My name's Toby and I have the pleasure of being your host today. Now we all know that to thrive in the new world of digital business, companies have to stay on top of innovation like never before. So we're bringing you 11 sessions here from the Innovation Showcase and we're gonna share with you the latest solutions, service innovations and best practices which we know will inspire and engage you here at Cisco Live 2019. Now today we'll be exploring the world of security and it's my pleasure to introduce you and have up here on stage Jeff Reed. Now Jeff Reed is Senior Vice President of Product for Cisco Security Business Group, overseeing product management, customer success, and technical marketing. Previously, Reed was SVP of Cisco's Enterprise Infrastructure and Solutions Group, so he comes with expertise in both networking and security. He's a regularly featured speaker here at Cisco Live Europe's Innovation Showcase. Please give a warm welcome to our stage, Jeff Reed. Thanks, Toby. All right, welcome everybody. So we're gonna talk about a subject near and dear to my heart, hopefully near and dear to some of your hearts as well, around the firewall. And what's going on in the world of network security? Why is this interesting and important? Because as you all know, the way that users and things are getting to applications and data is changing. Cloud, IoT, mobility, all these things are kind of fundamentally changing the traffic pattern and where you want to deploy security controls in your environment. And so as that happens, we have these questions like, is the perimeter dead? Where do we put those controls? As you might expect, this is an area that we at Cisco have been paying a lot of attention to. And what I want to do is, is first kind of walk through the broader vision of this transition. It's kind of really being driven in all of your environments. But then I'm going to double click specifically around the network security component and the firewall pieces and kind of what we're doing in that space. I'm going to be joined by three different demos. So hopefully you get a lot of actual like, visibility into the specific technologies that we're building in this area. So let me start first with a diagram that is a lot of you are network people out there. It's not a real network architecture, but it helps me tell the story in terms of what we're doing. So look. In the good old days, things were pretty simple. Your applications and data were basically within your corporate perimeter. You didn't have that much traffic going out to the internet. I had a few places where I was egressing. I'd put my DMZs, I'd put my security controls. Life was simple. Little thing called the cloud comes along. Mobility starts to happen. And all of a sudden, things start getting really complicated. And so what we've done at Cisco, we're making kind of, we've made four kind of big investments in this area, kind of as we start to see this transition happen. The first one started with our acquisition of OpenDNS and our umbrella technology. I like to call umbrella like the best pound for pound fighter in security. Like nothing is as easy to deploy or as effective as umbrella. So that's the really kind of compelling piece. And, and Umbrella is really about protecting user to service traffic. Like that's where it sits. How do I protect things and users going out to the internet? So that was step one. One other thing to keep in mind, Umbrella brings with it a very like worldwide infrastructure around cloud security kind of points of presence and in, in infrastructure. And that'll be important as I, as I go along further. So that was step one. And that's about user to service. So the next thing that we're worried about is as applications and data go to the cloud, how do we protect those? Like they're no longer in our data center, the same controls may not be the same things we're using now. And so this is where you get our investment areas in CASB for cloud lock. And, what we're, and that's really focused at your SaaS environments. And then in your IaaS and your PaaS world, really how do we protect that service to service traffic? So StealthWatch Cloud that's looking for the behavior in your cloud environments, finding anomalies, indicators of compromise. Tetration, which I'm actually really excited about. That's you know, allowing us to understand what the application dependency mapping is, like what services are talking to what normally, and then actually being able to deploy you know, fine-grained segmentation around ensuring that micro-segmentation so that only services that should talk to services can do so. And then clearly, a broad capability set around virtual firewalls. So you know, allowing you to take those technologies, I'll get to this in more detail in a bit, and bring those to the cloud. Step three, there's this little thing called SD-WAN coming. How many of you are in the process of deploying or thinking about deploying SD-WAN this year? 
All right. It's, yeah. Y'all, lots more. I mean, the stats that we're seeing is like between 40 and 50% of customers are going to make a decision on SD WAN in 2019. The thing that SD WAN does that you guys are all familiar with is all of a sudden we have these branches where we might be enabling direct internet access or direct cloud access. So the kind of the old, the nice paradigm where I backhauled all my data, I had very few points headed out to the internet where I deployed my security controls. That's good. That changes dramatically in an SD-WAN environment. So the key here is how do we enable you in this world to put controls where your new traffic patterns happen? So this would be the core to kind of what I talk about in the second half of this, of this talk is really what's going on in this space. So that's kind of the third piece. Lastly, but not least in any way, as you think about this cloud transition, and you know, I met with, uh, we had a round table for security customers yesterday. Essentially, every single customer I talked to want to talk about security in the cloud. One of the most effective capabilities that you want to start thinking about also is around identity. This is why we bought Duo Security a few months ago, because it turns out that 80% of breaches have compromised credentials. One of the most simple and easy ways to stop that is with multi-factor authentication. Duo Security, we think, built the single best way to do that. So they've created this real great capability around identity. They do not only user identification, making sure I trust that you are who you say you are, but they also do posture assessment of the device and create policies around what happens. And so you know, as you start looking at really access control anywhere across your environment, we think identity is going to play an absolutely critical factor. And, and that's really what you know, Duo brings to Cisco. They also bring capabilities in kind of zero trust, beyond corp, software-defined perimeter, kind of these buzzwords you're hearing in the security market, where you can even get to a point where I can allow access from a user on a mobile device to a SaaS application completely off network. Because if I trust that you are who you say you are, I trust the device that you're getting access to, and I've got like you know Casby or something in the cloud, all of a sudden I can start doing really interesting access patterns. And so again, all these are ways that are like where security is changing as we're seeing this transition to the cloud. Makes sense. All right, head nods. So let me now double click those specifically in the network security area. As I go here, so uh, anyone know the leading networking vendor in the world? Anyone? Cisco? Leading enterprise security vendor? People might not know that, also Cisco. And I think this is really important, because you know, as we look at network security, we have some great capabilities by bringing what we're doing on the networking side together with what we're doing on the security side. And so you'll see, as, as, and this is part of the whole process. You heard it this morning when, when David talked, to, when we talked about what we're doing, Gordon actually talked about, around what we're doing in terms of Viptela and integration of the firewall capability sets. This is really, really important. And that's why you know, I actually spent seven years, my first seven years at Cisco I spent on the networking side, coming over to, to the security side the last couple. So it's really about how do we drive the capabilities we can bring that's kind of unique in this, in this space. So when I think about the future of the firewall, kind of future of network security, there are three things that we're absolutely focused on doing. The first one is we want to enable world-class security controls. And when I mentioned this is security. If you think about like, where we've been in the networking security space, lots of you are familiar with ASA, kind of where we've, we've been. You know, we acquired SourceFire because of the security functionality it brings with it. And, and the core to this is we're enabling those world-class security controls and then taking those. And the second piece is we're allowing you to deploy them in every place that you need them. So if we go back to kind of this, this vision, traffic patterns are changing you might, know, might need to put those controls in different places. So the second piece is we're going to take those and enable you to have freedom and flexibility based on the environment that you have, the traffic patterns you have to put them where you need them. That sounds great, but there's a little concern there is it could be really complex. Like I have all these security controls, they're running in new places. So the last pillar of our network security strategy is enabling one place, unified capability around policy. So kind of wherever they run, I have one place to go for defining the, my security policy. 
and then one place to go to get my threat visibility. So those are the, if you kind of tie down all the things we're doing in the future of the firewall, it really boils down to these three pillars. So now what I do is I want to walk through these and give you kind of a, a sense for where we're headed. So starts with world-class security controls. At the heart of that, you know, what we've been doing in the firewall space is taking IPS, IDS technology and integrating that into our classic firewall functionality. That's using Snort IPS. We've been the magic quadrant leader for basically as long as there's been a magic quadrant for IPS. We continue to be in that, you know, focused on enabling world-class IPS, IDS, merging that into firewall. We also have other security controls that are embedded in our network security capability. Advanced malware protection. The great thing about AMP is it not, it came from IPS, but we've taken that control and we put it in email security, web security, endpoint security. It's going into cloud security. It runs in Meraki MX. And AMP is all about visibility. The more places where you're looking at files, any place you see a file, everywhere AMP is running and every customer benefits from that. So it's this huge, great network effect. The more places AMP is running, the better your security is. We brought it there, extending it. And the last piece is all this is backed by our Talos Threat Intelligence team. Look, Talos, they're super smart guys and gals, maybe a little unique if you meet them. But the really important thing about Talos is they have unmatched set of data upon which they can do their analytics. You see the numbers up here. And really, this whole game around threat intelligence is a data game. The more data you have, the better the visibility you're going to get, the better the controls you're going to be able to write. That's, and then more people will deploy it, you'll get more data. So it's this nice virtuous cycle that we've seen in the environment. So Talos is supporting all of our security products, taking that intelligence and driving it in. And you see this in how our customers are deploying. So we've got a great example. I don't know if we have anybody from the Lower Austrian Firefighters Association here, but you know, they deployed our, you know, our dedicated network security products and firepower. And you see the outcomes. What they found, the kind of the step up from their previous network security architecture was really around the threat response that they got. So you know, finding malware they was already in their environment, blocking zero days. So these are the capabilities that if you deploy world-class security controls, you can get across your environment. So that's kind of pillar one. How do we enable that? The second piece, we've got to take those controls and we've got to make sure they're running where you need them. And this really gets back to this picture. So if you remember, we used to be able to take all our traffic going through the DMZ. That's changing as more and more traffic goes out from your branch environments in SD-WAN. How do we make sure we're protecting you? The way that we're doing it security is taking those world-class security controls and making them run all over the place. So we've got the classic firepower, dedicated security appliance is a great choice for a lot of your environments. You're still going to want those in your DMZ, et cetera. But really the interesting thing here is we've taken those same controls and we're integrating them into the routing infrastructure, Meraki MX or ISR base, as well as into the cloud with our secure internet gateway with, with uh, Umbrella. So let me talk about those two things quickly. So Umbrella, as I mentioned, started with DNS protection. But we took that cloud platform and we're integrating all these additional security controls into it. So not just DNS, but full block, proxy, secure web gateway, cloud-based firewall, integrating CASB technology, et cetera. But instead of me talking more about what we're doing in Umbrella, let's actually show you what we're doing. So Nitin Kumar, can you join me? Nitin's part of our Umbrella team is going to walk through a demo of some limited availability sneak peek stuff on the Umbrella side. Hey, hey Nitin, how are things? Good. So these are all live demos, which is potentially concerning, but I've got great faith in Nitin here. So how are we doing? It's, good. it's looking all right so far. All right, perfect. So uh, I'm glad you, you sort of queued up uh, you know, the discussion about SD-WAN and branch. Yep. So one of the main challenges that customers come to us for is, hey, we're adopting cloud applications. We're sending all of our traffic directly out to the internet. Yep. And you know, the ch there's some challenges around that. One of the challenges is scalability. So some customers, it doesn't make sense to always transport uh, their, uh, their enterprise infrastructure, right? To all those branch locations, locations. To all yeah. branch locations. Exactly. It can get expensive, and in some cases, it doesn't always make sense to have a lot of hardware at every single branch location. Absolutely. Right? Yep. And 
going to our topic, we're talking about firewall today. So one of the capabilities that we're developing uh, with Umbrella Platform is a cloud-delivered firewall. Fantastic. So now we're able to actually present you know, some of those capabilities in the cloud, and we'll actually run you through uh, what this looks like today. Uh, this is a, a limited availability feature. You guys are lucky enough that you get a sort of a sneak preview today. <laughs> Your innovation showcase, yeah. here we're going to talk about some innovation. Exactly. So the first thing that we would do here is the customer has to get the traffic to us. Yep, step one. Step one is get the traffic to us, and what will support day one is an IPsec tunnel. And to set that up, we would simply, on the umbrella side, we would give it a tunnel name. We can call this uh, Barcelona. Pandering to the audience, yeah. I like it. <laughs> And you can see in the drop down, we have a few device types that will support from a, like attack and support perspective. Yep. Uh, ASA will Thank support you. Cisco ISR, and then we'll support CSR as well, uh, since yep. they sort of run the same code. Yep, and you're working on Meraki as well. And we'll have, uh, as we move forward this year, we'll have Meraki uh, yep. MX integration, and we'll do some integrations with, with uh, Viptela. Yep. We saw the SD WAN story, so that's sort of how we stitch these uh, products Perfect. together. Networking plus security? Exactly. All right. And the last thing you see is there's another uh, sort of uh, option here. So that means even if you don't have an edge device that is uh, non-Cisco, we can still uh, create the IPsec tunnel on there and then go ahead and, uh, and route the traffic to us. Not that we recommend that, but yeah. <laughs> exactly. So what I would do is simply click Save, and then th this would generate a cert, and then part of our IPsec tunnel configuration would just be dropping the cert onto the, uh, uh, the, the edge device, whatever you, you want to use. Yep. So once we have our tunnel set up and once it's talking to our, our data centers, the next part is what do we actually do with that traffic? So with Cloud Delivered Firewall, what we can do is set up a, a basic firewall policy. So we have, uh, we have one pre-created, but I'll actually give you guys a preview of what it's actually going to look like. So initially it's going to be an L3, L4 firewall. Yep. And then we'll be introducing layer seven uh, capabilities later on this year. Perfect. So we can basically cover you know, any protocol, uh, so your basic protocols. We can specify based on tunnel. Yep. So if you have 20 branch locations, each one has a separate network tunnel. Create different policies for each tunnel. Exactly. Awesome. Uh, we can filter by or, or block by source IP, source port, destination IP, destination port, yep. sort of the gamut yeah. of what Typical ports and protocol, yeah. Exactly. Uh, the other function we've added in is uh, sort of a rule expiry. So let's say maybe it's, it's World Cup time, <laughs> and you want to restrict certain IPs for, to save bandwidth. So we can schedule a rule during that time to say, hey, we want to block these IPs, and you can expire at the end of World Cup, as an example. And the last part is rule action. So what do we actually do with that traffic? So today we can block and allow, and then we can enable logging on this as well. Perfect. Yep. So speaking of logging. Sure. Yeah, so uh, the other component that's already embedded inside of Umbrella is we can, you know, using an S3 bucket, we can export to uh, any SIM that you guys would have. So yeah, Radar, sure. Splunk, and we'll be incorporating the same capabilities into uh, our firewall logs as well. So if you're familiar with the Umbrella uh, logging solution today, then it's going to be Off and running. the same, uh, same functionality. Very cool. Yep. So I'll show you what the actual reporting looks like from a, uh, from a firewall perspective. So we go to activity search. And then we'll just drop down the last 30 days here. So we've already created a tunnel. Yep. Uh, we just called it NYC branch. So let me just pull that up. It's your demo environment. It's our demo environment that we set up a tunnel on. So we can automatically filter by just the tunnels. And we can do this across multiple tunnels. The other component that we've added on is being able to filter specifically by firewall logs. So yeah, we can actually cool. do that. And so this way, we see all of the traffic that's coming through through our cloud-delivered firewall. Obviously, it's all your space, firewall yeah. events. Yeah, 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 all the firewall events for any location that you set up with uh, with uh, Umbrella. Very cool. Uh, the other thing we can do is just drill down. So if we wanted to know more information about a specific request, we can uh, just click on this little guy here, and now we get full details. We can filter by the IP, the destination IP, source IP, the port, the protocol. Uh, cool. So really, if you want, really want to dig into that specific request, you have all the options available to you. Nice. So we talked about SIG being, you know, f Cloud Firewall was one yep. of the capability sets. There's other things you guys are working on. Can you share anything else you think is of interest to these folks more yeah. broadly on SIG? Yeah. Yeah, so we're also, you know, looking at, um, uh, we're also introducing CASB capabilities, and then as Jeff mentioned, you know, proxy capabilities as well, sort of uh, getting embedded into the product. Nice. Yep. You want to show the CASB off? Yeah, absolutely. So the other the use case around branch is we talked about scalability. 
it's also visibility as well. So if I'm adopting all these different cloud applications, how do I get visibility into the usage, right? How yep. do I know what cloud applications my users are using? And that's what our app discovery dashboard actually so shows is over a period of time, what applications are being adopted. Very cool. So we can drill down and we can see, hey, if, if I want to know about a specific uh, high risk category of applications, mm -hmm. I can actually drill down. And now that I see that there's some collaboration apps and there's some cloud storage apps that are actually uh, high risk. So we can actually drill down into that and give you more details. And now I have one app that was discovered under cloud storage that's high risk. Yeah. And we calculate risk based on a number of different things. All the capabilities you have in cloud lock. Exactly. So is it, uh, does it support two-factor authentication? Yep. Does it have weak password support? So all of these factors, including compliance, make up how we actually calculate the risk. Very cool. And within the same dashboard, uh, we can say, look, we don't want to sanction this app. We actually mm -hmm. want to block it immediately so our users can't access it. It's a high-risk app. So what we do is we, from the uh, app discovery dashboard, we click on the uh, block this app. And now we go through a workflow of applying it to an existing policy. Nice. At the same time, we can actually mark this not approved. And just go from And we, we do this workflow for every app that we want to, uh, that we want to essentially block. On the other side of it, there's a setting called application settings where we can do this in bulk as well to make it easier. Very cool. So this is available today, actually, in Umbrella exactly. already, right? So app discovery is available today All in our Umbrella insights users. and platform package. Yeah. If you're on the professional package, it's just an add-on, and you guys can start using it today. Awesome. So hopefully you get a sense for how powerful we're building out from our cloud security platform Umbrella. Nitin, thank you so no much. Problem. Everybody, big hand for Nitin. Thanks. Very cool stuff. Thanks, man. All right. So, that was one example in terms of where we're putting new security controls. Hopefully you got a feel for what we're doing on the cloud side. The other big one is on the, what we're doing in terms of the routing platforms. You know, we've already had integration in Meraki MX, it's running AMP, capability set, et cetera. The big announcement in the last few, few months has been the integration with ISR. So basically taking enterprise firewall, snored IPS, URL filtering driven by Talos, all that capability set running in the ISR, managed by vManage, so the same application, same you know, management console you're used to from a SD-WAN perspective. And so the idea here is like give you choices. Like depending on your environment, as you're making this transition, you have the opportunity to use a dedicated you know, firewall, firepower appliance. You can use the cloud as a place where you're going to be able to do those security components. You could do it in the device itself, or you can mix and match, kind of depending on what controls you want to run where you want them. So, like, no, this is a kind of the really thing that, you know, if you're going by Cisco and what we're driving in network security, this is really a strategy that we're, we're embarking upon. So, that was the second pillar. So, last pillar, as you said, Lots of places we can put controls, world-class controls, but how do we make it easy for you to manage those controls? So we're there, we're really focused in two areas. One is how do we unify policy? And the second is how do we unify threat visibility? So let's start on the policy side. So this idea is really driven by a product we call Cisco Defense Orchestrator. Started as kind of like ASA firewall rule management. But as you'll see shortly, we're extending that broadly across the portfolio. And so what, what CDO does is it really all about this idea of enabling you to, to look at, again, those common elements, those world-class security controls, and set up policy for those wherever they're running within your environment. And so to talk more about CDO and show us what we're doing there, I'd like to introduce Joel Furman, who leads our firewall product management team. Hey, Joel. Thanks for having me. All right, glad to have you there. Woo! So you're going to be showing us CDO, correct? Absolutely. All right, you're off and running. All righty. All right, so with CDO, we have the capability to effectively do centralized management. That's not just within Cisco products, and that's something that we're going to share today. So how many folks in the audience use AWS at all in your environments? At I your mean, AWS all? folks, we have it. AWS. Oh, that's it? Only a quarter? All right. All right. I'm guessing so, it's higher, but we'll see. All right, all right, keep going. So what this allows you to do is effectively today, as it exists, it allows you to manage policies in ASA, as Jeff said earlier. And what we're launching in March is the ability to manage FTD appliances as well. So you can see here in this demo pod I've got, I've got ASA and FTD devices. 
Now what's really neat is we're adding quite a bit more functionality to this. And if I were to, for example, click on VPN, I can see all the VPN tunnels going on in my environment. I can look at a global view of that and get kind of a WYSIWYG editor where I can uh, move things around and see where traffic is going, et cetera. I've got a Frankfurt ASA set up, I've got a Barcelona ASA set up, and I've got some tunnels. Now one of these tunnels is kind of a mystery tunnel, right? It's going out to this IP address. We're not exactly sure what it is. And that's very common. You'll see oftentimes that occurring. And so a lot of times you have shadow IT and, and you don't really know, you know if people in your environment are spinning up AWS instances, Azure instances, yep. et cetera. And what we're actually enabling customers to do is actually get that new visibility into CDO and create common policy across multiple environments. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to onboard uh, AWS onto this environment right now. So if I go over here in my security groups in my AWS account, you'll see I've got this set up here and I can see inbound rules, I've got nothing, outbound rules, I've got nothing. And if you've ever, ever set up policies in uh, Amazon, you'll know it's a little bit cumbersome. So if I want to set up an outbound rule, I have to click edit rules and add rule and add each one individually. If I've got hundreds or thousands of different uh, accounts and gateways and such, it can be very, very cumbersome. Very cumbersome. Very yeah. cumbersome. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to exit out of this and go back to the security groups. And then I'm going to go into Cisco Defense Orchestrator. I'm going to go into my devices and services, and I'm going to hit this little plus button to onboard. Now you see we have a bunch of different choices up here, FTDs, discovering FTDs, et cetera. Now one thing you didn't see is umbrella. Umbrella, yep. Yeah, you, you didn't see that. And then we've got <laughs> connect to AWS VPCs. So if you click on that, I'm actually going to onboard that VPC we were looking at. And you'll see how fast this is. Again, this is completely live. I'm going to choose my US East. You're kind of creating the profile in CDO. Correct. Yep. I don't need to rename it, and I'm just going to continue. I don't need to add any custom labels. And right now, I actually have my AWS VPC environment synced seamlessly yep. with CDO. So what this allows me to do now is if I go here into VPN and I click on this little globe over here, now instead of this being a mystery address, I can actually see this VPN tunnel AWS, yep, bingo, VPC. terminating into my New York uh, VPC. Now clearly, if I've got a, a VPN tunnel going into my private cloud, or I'm sorry, my public cloud, yeah. I'm going to want to control what assets are on that, right? And I, I don't want the wild, wild west occurring or data going out of that VPC. So I look in this VPC, and again, you can look over here and see there's no outbound rules on here. And I decide, you know what, I want to deploy my golden template that I'm using with ASAs, FTDs, and other devices on-prem. I want to deploy my gold template in the cloud. Yeah, so you've got a standard outbound policy set. Absolutely. So I can show you, we go into network policies, we scroll down to the bottom, and here, it's just a very basic outside Apple policy. Yep. So if I come back here to this main window here, I can take my gold template and just copy it and select device, my New York AWS VPC, select the default interface, choose direction out, because again, I'm worried yep. about what's going to leave that VPC environment, hit save, and as I hit save, the policies are immediately populated in AWS. So, so now- Basically, CDO's translating that policy into the AWS environment for you. Exactly. On the native AWS firewall. Exactly. So now when I come back and look at outbound rules, all I have to do is hit refresh, and now I have all those outbound uh -huh. rules seamlessly in AWS. Now this is incredibly helpful because a lot of times customers will sync up not with CDO or, or with any other tool, they'll sync up a tool to Amazon, they'll go, oh my God, I had no idea how many resources from my prem were actually reaching out to the cloud until I started syncing up AWS accounts to it. But the key here is also being able to take this common set of policies and deploy them, ASA, Firepower, Umbrella's coming, Meraki's coming, Absolutely. so all those places, you have one place to do the management policies. Absolutely, and it does quite a bit more than that. So if we jump back into CDO, and I have another environment here, if I look at some of these devices and services, you'll see ASA and FTD devices. Um, a lot of folks have, have uh, in this room, I'm sure, have played around with upgrading ASA and FTD devices, and it can be a little challenging sometimes. It's not quite seamless. We're actually going to show you how within just a couple of 
uh, minutes, you can actually do a very quick upgrade. So I can go in here, and actually before I do that, I want to show you one quick thing. Don't take too long. I won't. <laughs> um, if I click on configuration, a neat trick we do here is I can actually access the command line interfaces, and I can save favorite scripts that I've got. So if I want to create a VPN, and it's something that I do frequently, all I do is click this one button, and I can just enter in the specific elements of interest that I've defined, predefined in For a template. those policies, yeah, yeah. Exactly, so most firewall admins do the same 15 or 20 things over and over and over. This really speeds it up, and of course this will do it for FTD as well. But if I go back real quickly to the upgrade process, I can select a couple of ASA devices, for example, click upgrade. I can select an image, and this image is residing uh, in the cloud on our server. You'll These see are our latest and greatest images. They're populated already. Yep. Correct. And you'll see one of them is actually red. So that's saying, hey, I'm already on the latest version. So it'll actually do a version check. It'll make sure it's got enough CPU and, and, and uh, storage space, et cetera. So I hit continue. I'm going to use a uh, image from my repository to upgrade the ASDM as well simultaneously. I'm going to, you can choose to copy the images only and then do an upgrade later. You can do copy the images and, and install and, and reboot, reboot. Yep. automatically or you can actually schedule an upgrade for a later date and time at a particular window that you so desire. I'm actually going to push this immediately, and you can now see the status of this. So if you've done an upgrade in the, fa uh, in the past with one of our appliances, whether it's uh, FMC or with ASA, once you hit upgrade, it just kind of cross your fingers and hopefully everything works out. What's really great about this is I can actually go in and device by device see that there's an upgrade in progress. I can click on this. I can review the upgrade. I can see what it's doing. So in here, I, it's checking the connectivity state. It's copying yeah, the image, yeah. et cetera. You can roll back if you need to. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I think this is, so this is a good example of how we're, again, trying to use the power of the cloud, see you as a cloud-based product, to really fundamentally improve that whole policy experience, give you a single place across the breadth of where you're doing network security to have control. Great. Awesome. Joel, thanks. thanks. This is fantastic, everybody. Big hands for Joel Furman. <laughs> All right. So that gives you a sense on the policy side the other big thing that we want to make it easy for you is on the threat side. So again, you have all these security products. They have visibility to different threats. How do we make sure that you've got a single place where you can get visibility on them as well? That's what we've done in Cisco Threat Response. So th Cisco Threat Response isn't only about network security. It actually supports our AMP for endpoints. It's in beta for email. So think of this as a single place where you can look for known, you know, uh, IOCs, see where they've been in your environment, understand what they might be related to, and really kind of get, a, that, again, a single place across the breadth of where you're deploying security controls, get understanding of that, the, that, the threat visibility they have. So to talk about this, I'd like to introduce Nasif Erdos. Nasif, he's a TME on our Cisco Threat Response team. Nasif, you, welcome to have you. Thank you. So you're going to give us a little demo on CTR. We're at Cisco. We create acronyms for everything. Um, before you were actually, though, you were a practitioner on the security side, right? Yeah, yeah. and the hardest part was how long it took yep. to get questions back as to something as simple, are we affected by something? Yep. We had to go to multiple systems, endpoint, network, just all over the SOC to figure out, are we affected? So I want to show you what we do these days. Yep, perfect. Um, Sneal walks into the office, and he <laughs> asks, are we affected by RAISI? Yep. When these things are published, consider this to be a security intelligence bulletin. Uh, we've got our uh, Talos team. This is our Talos blog. Yep. That publishes the indicators of compromise. What we've done with Cisco Threat Response is being able to just grab this information as it is, and through our extensions, can we search this? Right now, I'm going to go through 10 observables. And immediately, you're going to know out of that thing that you selected, yep. five are malicious and five are unknown. Wow. We've just pulled on our threat intelligence. Right there. Umbrella yeah. Investigate, Talos Intelligence, so and Global Intel, as well as Virus. So Global. basically enriching all of the things in those observables with what we already know across Cisco. Within a few seconds. With seconds, all right. Now I've got to answer the next question. Like, Am I impacted? Are we impacted, yeah. What we do here is click Investigate. Again, I just did one click. <laughs> and when I did that, I went across my portfolio and asked, am I affected? Immediately I know I am affected. 
because I've lit up three targets. Okay, so three of the purple guys. The purple guys. Yeah. Well, the purple guys are telling me that I've got one endpoint that has reached out to something. Okay. And I've got two network identities that have reached out to something. Network comes from umbrella. Okay, yeah. Endpoint yeah. comes from AMP for endpoints. Yep. And I may want to start acting on these things now. So I see this particular domain. At this point, I see that I've got some endpoints reaching out to this domain. I want to block it to give me immediate protection okay. while I perform the investigation. With the linkages into Umbrella, the enforcement API specifically, I get to block this domain. So right click, block, single place, one tool. Done. Now of, of interest in the security operations center are those things that are unknown, Jeff. And the unknown this element is what your here, old job used to be mainly about, right? Spend a lot of time figuring out the unknowns. Green is green, red is malicious, <laughs> orange is gray. gray. Yeah, yeah. That's where we spend a lot of time. So right now, we've known that we've got a file here that is unknown to us. Yep. We could decide to block it now, Jeff, or we could add it to our investigation. Okay. Which one would you like Find to do? Find out some more. Let's we'll see door number two. Okay. We'll add it to the investigation. And when we add this element that we had no idea about two minutes ago to our investigation, we open the aperture to the oh, wow. scope. So look what happened, Jeff. Simply by adding that hash, I'm able to tell you that that hash traversed a network gateway. Yep. It came in across our email security appliance. <laughs> and guess what? Two email addresses were targeted. OK. So I know this was probably a directed fish. Yeah. The file got in, one of my users clicked it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They clicked stage, it, the network security device saw it. Here you go. At this stage, I can decide so to block it. I think you should it. maybe block it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so if we feel we need to block it, again, we add this to our simple custom detection list. This right click. Blocked. You block an AMP. If AMP's running the firewall, if it's running block email, an AMP, block every, across everywhere. everything that is tied into that AMP cloud. That is killer. So you've got that protection at speed. Yep. But your talk was about firewalls. Yep. I want to show you what to do with firewalls. All right. This is a security intelligence event from the Firepower Management yep, Center. The security intelligence event, that IP, we've got a beaconing host on the network. OK, not a good That thing. is beaconing out to an IP address that we know we are blocking. OK. As security operations, we want to answer the next question. Who? What <laughs> and who exactly yeah, yeah, are doing that. is doing that? Through the integration with the 6.3 code, we are able to just come in here and go to threat response. Watch what we're going to do in seconds. We're starting with an IP, and in a few seconds, you're going to derive a target. And more specifically, again, you find out that there's a brand new file, file on that unknown, target. Because attackers can change a hash in a file very quickly. Second. Again, we can go down door one or door two at this time. Any way you do. The Let's point here it. was yeah. <laughs> we can block it now at speed. So that's so pivoting directly from our network security products into threat response to do a block using whatever the right control is at, at that point At the time. end of the day, we can protect the environment by getting to the root cause. That's awesome. And hey, Nasef, this is super exciting stuff. Thanks so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. So, so hopefully you get a sense like how powerful this can be of having something that works across the breadth of security controls in your environment we launched this at RSA last year. We've kind of just virally seen it get to over 3,000 customers already today. Started with AMP for endpoint, then umbrella support, email, and network and firewall are in beta right now. And we're extending that across, again, the breadth of places. So all the places you have security controls, be able to feed that visibility into threat response. And that's a good segue to the close here, which is, look, when you're thinking about network security, Yes, we've been all, all focused around what we're doing around network security, but you want to think about network security as part of your broader security architecture and environment. And that's where really the power of Cisco comes. We have an unmatched set of capabilities in the space. I talked a lot about the networking side, but we're investing in cloud, we're investing in endpoint. You know, we've spent roughly six and a half billion dollars on network security, or I'm sorry, on security acquisitions in the last five years. We've more than doubled our R&D and security specifically. Like we are absolutely focused on being the best and your most trusted security vendor in the marketplace.
So hopefully this was helpful. You kind of understand like where we're going around network security. Again, three simple things. World-class security controls in every place you need them with a single place for you to do policy and a single place for you to, to understand threat visibility. So with that, thank you so much. You can see all this stuff over in our security world of solutions demo area and get more visibility. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of Cisco Live. Thanks, everybody.